Welcome to RC Kicks. On today's show, well, this is the second part of the chassis build for the Tamiya Vanquish restoration project. On this episode, we basically carry on from where we left off from the first chassis uh, building video, which I'll put a link up here. And mainly we're finishing the front end, getting all the front suspension and swing arms all done, and then bolting it to the front of the chassis. Then we're gonna put the electronics in the chassis, and then we're gonna fire it up, dial in the electronics a little bit, get it so it's running and driving. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just running and driving. And after that, we will then turn our attention to the body. I have two brand new bodies for the Vanquish that I'm gonna do uh, together as a pair. Why am I doing them as a pair? Well, if you watched the last video, you will see that not only do I have the car that I'm currently restoring, but I have now picked up another one. So what's the story behind why I have another one? Well, <laughs> it's a bit like the Falcon all over again. Now I'm trying to get this car back to absolute mint as if it's never been driven. I'm trying to get it to the stage where it's just like I took it out of the box, built it and I've never driven it. That's kind of how I have my um, shelf queens. That's how I like them. Um, showing no wear or tear whatsoever and that's what I'm trying to do with this one now unfortunately due to the age of these and the availability of brand new parts is it's almost impossible that you have to source parts from where you can now luckily sometimes parts come up and then you can snatch them up it's a little bit more expensive but that's one way of doing it the other way of doing it is keeping an eye out for a second car making sure it has the parts you need for your first car and then you buy the car then once you've harvested the parts off the car you have the choice of selling it as parts which i'm not too keen on because it means there's just one less of this car around or two you put back on the other parts and then you sell it as is because some people are not trying to achieve a mint uh, shelf queen they're just trying to get hold of one that they can set up and drive now they're quite happy to take it it doesn't have exactly every single part brand new there's a few parts that are slightly worn or whatever they don't really care so it's a good way of harvesting brand new parts or undamaged parts and then selling on at a reasonable price the problem i have is what happens is i buy a second car deliberately knowing i'm going to take specific parts off it then i'm going to put the other parts that are slightly worn on that car and then sell it but I don't. I have this real problem of now, I want this to become my runner, driver, and this is my shelf queen. Which has got logic to it and does make sense. The problem is it's very expensive and you can't, having two of every car takes up a lot of space. But it is nice to be able to drive one and not worry too much about it. Whereas if I uh, rebuild one to mint and I put all that effort into it, I don't really want to drive it. But then I do enjoy driving these cars. So it, then you find I'm in this position of, well, uh, this one's not perfect, but it could be a good driver. And then before you know it, you end up with three because you need parts to finish this one off to make it a good driver and so on and so forth and then you end up down the falcon route if you haven't seen my falcon videos i'll put up a link up here and you can see exactly what i mean by you start off with one and you end up with three before you know it and then you wonder where all your money's gone um so that's why i have two now this one came with a load of parts that's why i bought this it, it was someone was starting to restore it and then sold it with a load of parts which is why i was attracted to it that and these don't come up very often um, and this one turned up and the yeah, the body's original but it's painted terrible and things like that but it came with a brand new body so what I can do is I've got to paint up a body for this one and I have original stickers I'm going to paint up two bodies and then uh, this one will probably become my driver or if if I have any sense and logic I will then sell this as a 
well sorted a vanquish. Anyway, I'm rattling on. So uh, before I bore the living daylights out of you, let's carry on with the chassis rebuild. And we are starting with finishing up the front end and bolting it to the chassis. On this car, the front anti-roll bar is actually bolted directly to the bumper. Right, we're just putting the finishing touches to the front end after what seems like a lifetime and then we're going to bolt it to the chassis. This part is actually quite easy. From the video you can probably see how much I'm struggling to find the correct bolt nut and screw. On this car you seem to use a different length bolt or a different size screw for just about everything. That's it, the front end is finally finished. Let's attach it to the chassis and it will start to look like a finished car at last. Apart from the front bumper, I've pretty much replaced the whole underside, so there's no road rash whatsoever on this kit, making it look mint. At some point I might try and find a bumper, but uh, as you can imagine they're not exactly easy to find. Now this is the part that makes the Vanquish unique in its class. Out of all the cars in its family, this is the only one that has the actual plastic tub. The section I'm now fitting is the top mount that brings the whole chassis together. Tamiya did offer an upgrade chassis for this car that basically makes it more like the Avanti or Egress. Personally I don't see the point as those cars exist. What makes this car unique is its chassis, so upgrading it kind of takes away that part of this car. It's time to fit the steering to the Vanquish. This is actually really simple and it just bolts down with two screws onto the chassis that gives it its pivot points. So you're not going to have any trouble with this steering.
Right, well, the next step is to put the electronics in the car. I actually put the mechanical speed controller run around the wrong way, but my instruction manual is a copy, so it's a bit on the blurry side. So a lot of what I'm doing, I'm doing purely on my own back and trying to reference small parts of the printout. Um, but yeah, let's put in the electronics. I'm trying to keep this car completely original and stock. So I've sourced a receiver and I'm just giving it a bit of a refresh before sticking it back down to the chassis. Um, if I was going to drive this car a lot, obviously I would use more modern electronics, but I do love the look of the old uh, style original mechanical um, speed controller. Later on I'd managed to get my hands on a set of original cream Vanquish wheels which is exactly what I was looking for because obviously I'm trying to keep this car as stock as possible. The tub chassis design of the Vanquish makes it quite easy to route your cables and it gives you lots of extra space so you can end up with quite a nice neat uh, electronic install on this car without too much effort. The car that I purchased didn't come complete with all its electronics so I've had to source some parts myself. I actually needed to get a new crystal set as it only came with half of a crystal set. So that took me a while to sort out. This is the first time I've actually ever run the car and I was really chuffed to see that everything worked exactly as it was supposed to. It's fantastic seeing her come back to life again after spending all that time sourcing new parts and uh, chasing those elusive difficult bits that you need. I'm just trying to trim up the mechanical speed controller so that the car doesn't keep running away with itself and just centering up the servo.
just doing the final trim up of the front steering I'm not looking for perfection here but I want it to point in the right direction <laughs> So there you go, that's a rebuild of a vintage Tamiya Vanquish. What did I think of this kit? Well, I can't say I was in love with it. Um, the one I purchased, because they're so rare now, the one I purchased was messed around with, was tired, had a lot of parts that weren't right. The suspension that was put on here didn't work very well. Um, I don't know if you can remember, I'll put a link back to the original video because it's been quite a while now, but this car came with um, the upgraded uh, high caps. Uh, I think they're called high caps, I can never remember. Um, but I'll put them on something else, but they just didn't work on this car at all. And there was nothing wrong with them. I don't know if these are the wrong ones, but it, the back of the suspension was just saggy and it was on the floor. So I will reuse these on something maybe a little bit more upmarket. Kit's not so bad. It, maybe I'm being a little bit harsh on it after working on a few other kits and I'm getting a bit spoiled. But there's a lot of plastic and getting parts is really difficult and some of them can be quite expensive. So that kind of put me off and I was kind of going down the same sort of road as the Falcon uh, again. and you throw money at these and then obviously you lose it because it costs so much more to bring back one of these back to mint condition than it does just to buy a mint one and just wait once if you spend all that money bringing it back to mint if you was to sell it the parts cost that you spend and the time to find the parts you actually will spend more so again my recommendation if you can find one is to buy a mint one but whether you'll actually find a mint one there's not many of them around i can't even find a manual um i want an original manual but after three months not one has come up for sale that i've found so if anyone has a manual an original manual for one of these please let me know oh yes uh, i don't want to pay a hundred pound for it because it's just a manual but if anyone has one but as you can see i've got by without one and just using a photocopy but it'd be nice to have an original manual for the car as well next after this is to paint the body um, put the stickers on it and it's pretty much finished so now the car is pretty much Fully working again which is great anyway thanks for watching please like and subscribe and i will see you on the next one thanks very much bye bye